thing. While she driving to the casino, her sister in the passenger seat, whole time she reaching back and she massaging my leg. In time, and you know what I'm saying? She massaged my I like I liked all of this. You know what I'm saying? I like it was a this woman had so what's up with you? What's up with you? This woman has so many great qualities. Commercial break me again real quick. That's why, you know, I, I pray. Now, I ain't saying I'm perfect by far. Now, I done did my first share of all kinds of things. Now, don't get me twisted, because if you don't read my book, then you already know. If you ain't read it, then you need to go read it. Go to my website, jtb3.org. I got both my books on sale right now for 25. jtb3.org. And if you ain't already following me, do me a favor. Hit the follow button and double tap the screen. But look, let me tell you something. That I pray my trauma, my emotional, the, the emotional damage I may be carrying, my mama issues I may be carrying, my daddy issues I may be carrying, my childhood trauma issues I may be carrying, excuse me, layers of things that I probably will never get to the root of that I can still be carrying. I pray that that don't never start to affect my marriage if the, if the most high bless me did not ever end up married. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's been a, I, I got women friends, and I, I know women who are married, and a lot of people end up in unhappy marriages. And it, get what? It don't be, it, it be love. If you watch the beginning of a lot of people's situations, now I ain't never been married. If you watch the beginning, and then over time, six, seven years in, 10 years in, and it started to crumble like that, it is the worst feeling in the world to look at the person that you once adored and loved with everything in you and you start to dislike that person. I done did that in a relationship. I done woke up in relationships and looked at this person and been like, man, I can't stand you. I don't want to get to that place. But see, a lot of people, listen, a lot of people don't know how to communicate when it's really time to communicate. Like what you really feeling, what you really going through, what this person, and then a lot of people don't realize you, you let a person do certain things in the beginning that you know you didn't like you just was hoping over time because of the way you carry yourself that this the way you carry yourself and the way you treat this person you hoping that this person is going to eventually stop doing things that you don't like this is what you think but really you set yourself up for the kill and then you realize later on in the situation you resent this person because you gave your all your heart your mind your spirit you know you know sacrifice your time you don't put in this effort and gave this person your heart. And that it, it man, listen, that you 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 feel so betrayed. And then you wonder why you got so many single people out here. And then the stuff that they say when it comes to getting in a relationship, people we we trick ourselves out of going forward in relationships. You know why? Because of hurt. You look for any little small thing. If it ties to any of your past trauma, that person don't stand a chance. If, if, if a person step on that trigger in the beginning of them 30 days, you go, a lot of us, I ain't gonna say all of us, because listen to me, healing is a process. People think healing is, no, healing is a continuation forever. You, you you can be you can still be healing a person step on a trigger and that don't mean that you haven't healed just because sometimes you got to look within and be and ask yourself okay am I thinking of this this way because of last time am I feeling this way sometimes you need to ask yourself because a person can simply just be being uh being funny or say something and not even intentionally be trying to make you feel insecure or make you feel like you have a trust issue. You a person can be being consistent. You they miss you you call them twice and they weren't able to answer. You not knowing it's probably in a family emergency and your brain done created all kind of scenario and now you thinking and it ain't even what it is. And see that, that that's why when I when I looked at this situation how affectionate this woman was, how, how attentive she was, how nurturing she was. You know what I'm saying? When you start, and it's a beautiful thing when you start, whether it be a man or a woman, when you start to see a person guard and walls come down and you get to see versus what they explain and what they've been through. Some of the things that they saying they did and this is that, and you start to see this person walls come down and they start to be the person that they had got so far away from being. You know how beautiful it is to watch a person with a genuine smile, genuine laugh. This, this is what I was getting the experience. But see, this is what's so crazy. Because the person you start bumping, the person you start bumping heads with, that person perspective of you is so negative. 
is so nasty. And then when that person explains to somebody to you, they got the they got that that bad part. You know what I'm saying? They did both of y'all, and you you just don't forget all the good. You just don't, but then you start experiencing it. So so when people start telling you certain things like that that person did did did, did, did that, you don't even see that. Do you know how many people, if you sit down with them and they start telling you about who I was in the past versus who I am today, they'll be like, that ain't, that ain't Joe T right there. That don't, that don't even sound like him. But see, that's how it is when you, when you get to that place with somebody that you was once in love with. That person, listen, that person, listen, they going to slaughter you. So when we driving and she would do, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, dang, that's crazy. Like, how do a person even jack this off? So we go in the casino, they gamble, and look, <laughs> look, let me tell you something. Then I'm gonna tell you something. Cause I was still like I'm still I was still growing at the time. So we sit down, we chill at this little slot, and somebody left their phone. So they left the phone, she grabbed the phone, and when she grabbed the phone, she looked at the phone, phone, look at her, her and the phone, look at each other. And when she swiped up on it, guess what? The phone wasn't even locked. The phone wasn't even locked. She said, come on. I said, where we going? She grabbed my hand. I said, who are we going at? We walk off. She said, I feel see if they get cash out. I said, oh, you're a little criminal too. <laughs> oh, you just you just such a sweetheart. You so you so affectionate, so nurturing, so and then and then you get a chance that you can get away with something break. I said, then you'll break the law. I said, listen, that to see you see, that's the trauma that was still in me. That that's the that's the lingering old side of me Did you that's why I said healing is a process. Just because just because something go off in you, it don't mean that's still who you are. You can still be working on it. And now, now, if you follow through with it, you got to realize, man, what is you doing? But I ain't going to lie. When I saw that, I said, ah, oh, she such a sweetheart. I said, what are we doing? She walk out, right? She said, come on real quick. Come on. She go to the cash out. She said, what's your cash out? I said, see your sister. She said, I ain't going to tell my sister. My sister, she, she already here gambling, doing this. I ain't going to see her no more. She ain't going to do no more. want to go gamble it up. She going to be going over. She going to be trying to play blackjack with She said, we finna split this. I said, oh. she just stole my heart. No, we finna split it. We finna split it. Yeah, yeah, just send me. I'm going to send it to you. And then you, because she didn't have cash. She just, just send it to me on PayPal or whatever, whatever. Just, I, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to get to you in cash. What? She said, what's your cash? I said, okay, so boom, one. She said, okay. I should. I look at the phone. Phone. Look at me, man. Phone. Looking at each other. She said, "Did it come through?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You most definitely get some pee tonight. She said, "I'm gonna try it again." I said, "Hold on, real quick now. Now wait, wait a minute, now you little criminal. Now you're doing too much now. <laughs> now you're doing too much. Now let's not forget, I done ten years in prison, and we are using my cash out." Now we ain't finna do that now. Now wait a minute now. You like one of them people that were filing them PPP for people and they couldn't be connected to you. You got all the money and they, and they going to jail. Now, 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 now you hold on now. <laughs> now that's enough. <laughs> that's enough right there. I'm gonna shoot you a little bread. It's over with. So I shoot her a little bread right there. What? We leave, we leave the hotel. The next day, get, <laughs> the next day I get a cash out for a dollar. Get with my, they, they, I get I get five dollars because you know you can't send a long note in the cash out. So I get five dollars, and every dollar they 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 put a sentence in there. My guy said, "I lost my phone last night at the casino." <laughs> he said another one. It's cameras all in the casino. <laughs> I don't know who you are. <laughs> he said another. <laughs> but I would I need you to send me my money back. <laughs> or I'm calling the police. <laughs> I know. Oh, Oh no! Now see, listen, 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 listen. That's why I say the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In that situation, guess what? I took full, I took full flesh. I took, I, I took all ownership this time. I'm finna lose two hundred fifty dollars because I was doing something I ain't had no business doing. Regardless of what was going on, I should have told her I'll stop either. Nah, you ain't gonna use my cash up, but we ain't doing it at all. But in this situation, I'm thinking, oh, we finna get away with this, and I chose to do it. So when that man threatened me to call the police and told me it was cameras all in the hotel, all in the casino, get what I said? He right? I done been to jail before. I'm finna send it back. I sent him the 500. I sent him the 250 that I had, and then I sent him another 250. I ain't, need, I ain't never tell her about it. So if you see this video, you really owe me 250 dollars. You need to send me that. So, 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 so I sent them, I sent them the money back. I sent them the money back. I'm not finna play these random game with you, no sir. And I sent them the five dollar back. I sent them 505.
You can even have them five hours back that you sent to send me that message. You ain't even got to worry about that, my guy. <laughs> Sit that too. So look, so look, check this out. So now, after me and this, me and this one, we, we done really got real tight. So she started telling me more about this dude, certain things he would do. Now, it was, it was two stories that she told me that made me think, oh, yeah, this, 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 he, he a little different. This, this, she also told me how old he was. Now, 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 he was like 12, 13 years older than her, too. He was, he, he was almost sugar daddy material. You know what I'm saying? He, he was almost, then she showed me a picture of him. And when she showed me the picture of him, I ain't even gonna lie to you. In the back of my mind, get what I thought. Oh, she most definitely started dealing with him because he had some money. He would take care of her. Yeah, he, he, he I ain't no, I said, what was she doing dealing with him? Oh, yeah, he had that bag. He had to have that bag. So at that point, yeah, I'm gonna put this on YouTube. So at that point, I said, huh, she might think I got the bag, too. She might think I'm finna, huh? That's interesting. So then, so then she tell me, look, she tell me. It was one story. She she started dealing with a state trooper, right? He found out she was dealing with this dude, which he, he didn't know. So he started. He paid some of the kids in the neighborhood and gave him his phone number. This is a true story. Gave him. They, his phone number and said if you see a car in this mama you disrespectful yeah y'all commercial break me real mama you disrespectful on this line hold on <laughs> hold on hey mama I feel like you I feel like you've been doing that all my life too you you always ready to tell somebody that they lips is dry is that what that's a <laughs> So look, 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 check this out. <laughs> so look, check this out. <laughs> I got the coconut oil in there too. So look, I'm glad my mama on here because my mama, my mama is really the reason why I, I decided to just go ahead and let this and, and leave that alone, right? Because my mama told me, my mama said, let me tell you something. She said, that married lady ain't going to never leave that man. I don't care what she tell you, what's going on, she ain't going to never leave that man. Well, my mama said that, I said, you know what? You you might know something. You might know a little something. I, that, that's, that's, but that's, that's close to the end of So she tell me that this man Done paid the kids To tell you know what I'm saying If he see a car So the kids done text this man When she done invited this dude over to the house This man Come over to her house Go next door In the neighbor's shed Take the ladder Put it on the house Climb the ladder was looking inside the house and recording this woman while this dude was in there. He don't tell her nothing about it. He wait two, three days, then he gonna say, he gonna say something. He, he gonna say something like, "Oh, I like that such and such such and such you had on." She said she was thinking to herself, "How in the world do he know?" Because let me tell you something else. She ain't been able to go get sex in a long time. You know what I'm saying? In the beginning, you know, they, they want to go put them Vicky Secrets on, come out, you know what I'm saying, with their lingerie, get a little sex. But uh, listen, when a woman quit doing that right there, you all know, you done, done something. You done, done something too. And she, and she wearing sweats all the time. No! What happened to all that? And now, now he feels some type of way because he done seen her doing something she ain't done in a long time. She don't print with that. He done talk, oh yeah, I seen when you Yeah, that's my mama. So, oh yeah, I seen such and such and such and such and such, right? So, she ripped, she asked him whatever, whatever, come to find out. One of the kids, they done got in trouble in the neighborhood, their parents done took their phone, went through their phone, and seen that they been texting and he been paying them. He been paying them $100 every time they text and tell him something. Oh, she leaving the house. They, these kids was literally doing that. He was giving them folks $100. So the parents find out. They go next door and tell the kid, explain to her what they've been doing. So that's what she put two and two together and come to find out that this man had been paying these kids. And that's why she's been trying to figure out how every time I go somewhere, he texts me and was like, oh, you just left the house. Where are you going? Soon as I get to the to the stop sign, he texts me talking about, oh, you leaving the house? Like, what in the, how in the world is he knowing all that? Then the neighbors as went over there again and asked her, uh, had her son or anybody, had she seen her son or anybody in they shed or in there? Because the ladder 
had been positioned and they could tell stuff had been moved around and somebody had been using the ladder. She put that to young. That man was going next door, pulling the ladder out and climbing up and watching this woman in her window. So this, <laughs> they going through it. They going through a, 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 a separation. They living in two different houses at the time. The house that she stand in at the time, I didn't know the house was still in his name. He got a whole, he, he stands somewhere else at the time. So look, check this out. One day, <laughs> true story, man. I can't make this stuff up. One day she tell me she leave the house to go somewhere. She, I can't remember what kind of car it was, a little truck, a little SUV, whatever it was. She driving in the car. And as she driving, she talking to her sister. And she talking about her situation and she ready to leave and this, this, and that. She telling all of this stuff, right? She pulled up. At the at the grocery store where she where she at, this man jumped from the back. He boom. I so you don't want to be with me no more. She said she looked. What what did you go know in the back seat? What you been back there the whole? This man done literally got in his car and was riding in the back, listening to this woman conversation all the way to the grocery store. She said as soon as he, well, I'm finna get ready to run in the grocery store. I will call you when I come back out. He pop up. Boom. So you don't want to be with me no more. She said, you is crazy. I said, I said, he did what? She said, yeah. I said, how long is the, the drive to the grocery store? She said, about 15 minutes. 15 minutes? This man sit in the back seat of this car, in the back of this SUV for 15 minutes? <laughs> Another situation. She said, this is before he wrecked. She driving, when he wrecked the car, she driving one of his cars. She go in the grocery store. It's snowing. She go in the grocery store. This man pull up in his other car, park it somewhere, get out of his car, drive and go get in the other car and pull off and leave. She come out the grocery store. Listen, to he parked somewhere where he can see her. When she come out walking to the car, he she said he, he had to see me just looking around. He gonna call me and say, yo, now, 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 now who you gonna call? Now, 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 call somebody and tell them come get you. Who, who gonna be there for you like me? I said, dude, what? She said, yeah, he would do stuff like it. Hey, you trying to, let me tell you something. Commercial break me, please. Because men, so men and women, they, especially when they feel like either they the breadwinner or the controlling, manipulative and stuff like that, they try to find, they break you down and they start making you, they start making you question who's gonna be there for you the way that they are. And see, that's why a lot of, like, one of my exes, she never left her situation. It was an abusive situation, physically, emotionally, verbally, every, every way you could think of. But people who knew on the outside in, listen to what I'm going to tell you now. People who knew on the outside in used to tell her all the time, oh, you need to leave, you need to leave, you need to leave. But see, let me tell you something about a person who's being abused. Stockholm Syndrome is a real thing. You fall in love with your abuser. You start to believe what your abuser is telling you, whether it be about your physical, your whatever it is. And then you start to think that is the only person that you can rely on. Like it's a, it's a real deal thing. Now, some things I, be, I used to have a hard thing comprehending because I'm like, what? Like how in the world are you going to make me believe like you can't see, you need to? Like what? But then so many people telling you to do something, but... They don't realize the stability that a person of that nature will create for you to control you. A person will create stability for you in order to control you. And then they'll isolate you and make you feel like can't nobody else do it for you. They'll make you feel like that about your parents. They'll make you feel like that about your siblings. And then they're going to start talking about your friends. And then they'll start talking about your friends because they want you to they want you to embrace in your spirit. Because the minute you start to accept something in your spirit, you're going to start to believe it up here. And when you start believing, and so the minute it was a strategic calculated move. So if he pull up, I am I'm your transportation. I'm your shelter. I'm I'm your everything. And without me, who going to do it for you? Then you got to keep in mind that this woman got three children. So when he come and take the car and he call and say, yeah, now who you going to call? And you know, nine times out of 10, everybody you call probably can't even, they probably can't even come and get you. 
So, and it, and, it, and it hurts you and it breaks you because, because she started telling me certain things about her relationship with her mama. They got a decent relationship. But it was like, she knew, like, I can't, if I do call her, she'll be able to do this. But she can't do all of these other things. See, men or women, because I don't want to make this a one-sided conversation because I know women do it too. But if I had to lean towards a percentage, I would say more men doing this than women. A man, a man can easily make you feel like uh, I'm all you got, and but they keep they keep sowing that in your head. By the time you thinking, oh, I want to leave, guess what you gonna struggle with? Who gonna do this? Who gonna who gonna watch the kids if I need to do this? The car, how am I gonna get here and do that? The finances, and then what they do is they try to they try. They gonna make sure you're never in a position financially, because that's 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 the main key right there. If you're not in a position financially, get what you gonna start saying. I'm gonna I'm gonna save up till I get to this. I'm gonna save up till I get to this. I'm gonna save up till I get to this. And if a person who really on that game like that, they gonna peep when you're doing it. They ain't even gotta say nothing. But the only thing they gotta do is fall back and continue to let you spend your money. Because at the end of the day, you are gonna have to take care of your bill, your kids. And if, even if the car is his, oh, he start when he started hitting you with the oh the car no do, the car no do. I thought you were paying the car no. You drive the car all the time, boy. It's because he wants you to spend your money. It's a calculated strategic move. Then then they hit you with something like this right here. Uh, oh the bills, uh oh, the rent do this. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little short on rent. I'm gonna need you to I'm gonna need you to pitch in on the rent. And then you think, well, dang, you been now? Nah, well, this month this month I need you. To, you know what I'm saying? It's because what what he doing is he trying to make sure you don't stack up. To the point of where you can be financially free of this person. That, that, that's just what they doing. So, so look, check this out. So eventually, he pulled. She tell me she crying. He pull up in the snow. When she see the car pull out, she realized right there. This man was literally calling her from a place in the parking lot, talking to her and watching her from a distance. He drive over there, roll down the window. Come on. She get in the car and she did. Listen to me. The mental, the, that emotional view, it, it's, it could be worse than physical. The physical, I'd rather you put your hands on me than turn me down mentally. Re real talk. Real talk. Now, I don't condone no kind of abuse, but I'm saying that physical abuse, it's a beast. But that mental abuse, it's, it's way harder to come back from. This woman get in the car. You got to you got to think. Because if, it's, if he done did this, he done, this ain't the first time he done done it. He done did it over and over and over and over and over and over. So you got to ride. You got to ride in the car with this person who you realize who did this over and over and over and over, over. You got to walk the walk of shame, walk in this house. Then listen to me. If you think, if, if a woman, man, whoever, if you in a house and if you think your children can't see the, the, the emotional, verbal, whatever abuse that you going through, I'm going to tell you something about a woman. It's easy to start seeing because she, she'll get irritated easy, agitated easy. You can't, she ain't able to be the nurture, the natural nurturer that she's able to be. The smallest thing send you from zero to a hundred. It can be something as simple as your kids coming in and ask you, mama, can I, and she, and she go off. That is that, that, that what's going on internally, you bleeding on somebody who didn't cut you. And then, and then you wonder why your kids don't want to come and talk to you. The enemy crafted now. Now, it, the enemy ain't got to send no man to prison and leave a woman independent to tear, to tear a home apart. Don't you, don't you think that for one second? Because he can, he can most definitely get into the mind of everybody who in the house. And, he, and before you know it, he'll drive all kind of confusion in there. So if he, so if he when the children come in at him, mama, boy, I am, she going through it. She can't even be the, the woman to her children that the most high done created her to be because there's so much chaos going on up here and then here so much abuse so much it's so much of everything on top of everything going on in here and then guess what he do he eat up he, he he used to eat up her time she do everything with the kids he ain't doing nothing he ain't doing nothing she taking the kids to karate she taking the kids to practice she taking the kids here she doing this she doing that and that time if, if she needed a break but see he using the kids as far as on the law 
He used he using the kids as spies for protection. He using the kids as spies, and he slick using them for protection. If you go, if I get the kids to go everywhere with them, she ain't gonna be able to go spend some time and go do something she ain't got no business doing. So that's what he doing. So then she tell me, she started telling me, oh, uh, he used to ask the little boy, his his little boy, he used to ask the little boy, oh, he, but he manipulating the children too. He have a casual conversation with him as if he just talking to him. Oh, what y'all do today? Oh, me and mommy, we such and such and such and such and such and such and such. But really what he doing, he got the kid, he got the kid telling him. So when she, let me tell you something. As she telling me all of this, it's drawing me even closer. You know why? Because, because, but like I said, both of us in a vulnerable state. Both of us, we trauma bonded to an extent. I just come out of relationship. So when she telling me all of this, guess what it's doing? It's, it's making my heart feel for her. You know what I'm saying? And see, that that's why a lot of times you can't, the heart is so, the heart can be deceived because it's, 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 it's weak, it's, it's flesh, it's, it's weak. So I'm like, dang, like that's, and then you automatically want to be the opposite to this person when you when you've got to see the better side of this person and you listening to the person who's stripping this away from this person. So as I'm listening, I'm like, man, this is crazy, like dang, like, and then you thinking, man, you step in and you y'all you thinking y'all could be like this, y'all could be like this. So. <laughs> Man, this this is great. So I go back up here again. I go back up here again. We kicking it one day, right? So when we kicking it, I could I could tell something was going on financially. I you, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember exactly what, but I could tell something was going on financially. I did, I didn't know what it was. So she tell me she got something in the mail that she was about to get evicted from the house if she didn't pay. Whatever it was. And so I asked her how much it was. When she told me how much it was, I'm like, dang. I'm not knowing the house that she's staying in, he was supposed to still be, he was still paying the bills. At least that's what she thought. She thinking he been the whole time, he been letting it fall behind, which was a strategic calculated move as well. Because if she fall behind, guess what? Nine times out of ten, she can't afford to go get her own place. And guess what? She gonna have to eventually come back and stay with him. Guess what happened? She ended up having to leave the house. When she left, when she left the house, at first she went to her mama house. And I'm telling her the whole time. Listen to what I'm finna tell you right here. I'm finna talk to a lot of women in just a second. The whole time after she explained this situation to me, I'm not finna step in the place and say, well, here. Here go the money, go pay the bills when you under the roof of a house that does not belong to you, which means you can still be controlled. I'm not finna help pay no car note when that car is not in your name because any moment he decided to come and take that car, it's his. It's over with. So it's no way. So I started letting her know, look, you wanna go get your own place, you wanna you, you, you can you can do that. I got you. Women, when you're saying you tired of something. A lot of women don't get the opportunity to get that kind of help. That's why they end up staying with their abuser. But you get to, uh, me, I got to see it from a different lens and how deep abuse can really be. Because you were still, she was still afraid to cut all ties. You know why? Because in her mind, she thinking, well, he might can do it this one time. But I've been with him for 10 years. Regardless of how long he has abused me, he's always gave me some type, some type of form of stability. So when she's looking at it like, well, he said he's going to do this and do that, but you will never leave. You will, you will never get away. But, but the mindset I'm trying to get her to see is you already, it's like she couldn't even see. You already got your own business. You already got your own business. The, the kids ain't got to leave. The car note ain't going to be, I'm trying to get you to see that it's not as expensive as you think it's going to be. It, it ain't like you ain't going to be able to sustain yourself, sustain yourself. Now, if you got to downsize, then downsize. You, you think, you want, you, people get so concerned and worried about, 
I don't want people to see that I'm struggling. I don't want people to see I had the downside. I don't want people to see that this lifestyle that I done presented about my marriage or my relationship ain't what it really is. And you get caught up in pleasing people. You get caught up in you you're still seeking that validation. Listen to me. You need to listen to what I'm telling you. You need to downsize. You need to change up how you moving. You need to start. You need to quit spending money where you know you can't afford to spend the money. And I'm trying to tell you the help that you, the help that I'm finna offer you, it can most definitely put you in a position to where you can remove yourself from the abuse. She didn't want to accept that. She didn't want to accept that. Guess what? Eventually, I started seeing. Oh, we wasn't talking as much, and then I ended up. Uh, I ended up, I don't, I can't remember how I saw this picture. I don't know if it was, I can't remember. It might have been on her son Instagram. I can't remember how I saw this picture. But it was a picture where he had went somewhere and he took, and he was showing, he was saying, this is going to be my room. So she telling me she's looking at houses, right? She didn't want to stay at her mama house for whatever reason. Guess what she ended up doing? Moving in with the abuser. What she what what she was saying she wasn't gonna do. You went right back to Egypt, just like in the word. In the word, when Moses, the burning bit, the burning bush, the stab turned turned into a snake. The snake turned back into a stab. In the in the burning bush, listen to me. Some people don't take a closer look at the burning bush. You know why? Some people some people see the burning. If you pay attention, they said Moses. It said he doubled. It said he looked twice. The first time he probably thought he was tripping. See, it's a lot of people who done had a burning bush, a burning bush experience. You saw something, you heard something, you felt something. It was something that fell right into your lap. And guess what? You thought it was too good to be true and you didn't look again. It said Moses looked twice. When he went and looked twice, that's when he heard the voice of the king. When he heard the voice of the king, you know what he told him? Go over and set them people free. He went over there 10 times asking the most high, you know, telling him what the most high told him. Now pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. Not only did the children of Egypt get set free, pay attention to the blessings of the king. When they left, he made sure they had everything that they needed. Everything. They left with gold. They left with they left with everything they needed to sustain themselves once they got out of their captivity, out of their bondage. Once he set them free from their yoke. Now, now true enough, it's a process, but you left with what you needed. This woman literally, it was a burning bush experience. He sent you somebody, whether we was going, whether we would have ended up together or not. He sent you somebody that's basically trying to get you to see. Not only did he try to get you to see, he I also offered to provide for you because he listen to me. He said he a father to the when he say he's a provider, he's a provider. When people say, oh, he work in mysterious way, but a lot of people overlook when he working in the mysterious way. Now, true enough, we should have never crossed them line. But you don't don't you put limitations on the king, because even though he said he hate the sin, not the person. It's a lot of people. You can pervert some, but that don't mean the most high won't say you ain't going to overstep my will because you got in the way of yourself. You got in the way of, of me trying to do something for somebody else and then whatever you had going on. But that ain't going to stop me from doing working this miracle that I need to work. However, it need to take place. Now, true enough. It could have been an assignment on my life. You know how I many the commercial break me, please. You know how I many assignments I done blew? But in them assignments that I blew, he still planted the seed. He still planted the seed even when I blew the when I blew the assignment. This most definitely could have been an assignment. Because even when this woman, how we even end up connected is because it was something similar to this right here. I was doing ministry. This woman was responding to people that I couldn't respond. What's up, Rhonda? This woman was responding to people, that, and that's what attracted me to it because she most definitely had a heart for the king. So look, check this out. So when she missing that, he delivered them out of Egypt with everything they need. They go through the wilderness for all of these years, walking in circles. And what did they start saying? What did the children of Israel start saying about their abuser, about their accuser, people that, who enslaved them, people who beat them, people who were killing them, people who were mistreating them, people who lied on them? People who was emotionally abusing them. People who was separating them from their family. What did they say about Egypt when, when they was traveling with Moses? What'd they say? I'd rather go back. They 
they said, I would rather go back. This is exactly what was going on. In this situation right here, after all of this was going on, after everything that you done told me, after all the stories you done told me, after all the abuses you done went through, after all this, after all this, after all of this, what's up, Larry, though? Everything you were stripped of, I'm talking tangible things, material things, spiritual things, physical, after all the stuff that you were stripped of from this person, you end up, now, of course, you uncomfortable. You, you at your mama house, you in a tighter space. Your children probably, now you watching your, your children be frustrated because you done had to come down. And now in your brain, the enemy start telling you, you, you better off going back, ain't you? That's how it gets you every single time. You better off going back, ain't you? You probably had to go stay with your homegirl for a little bit. And then after you sit there for a little either I'm better, I'm better off going back. You probably, <laughs> listen. You probably didn't like. You probably don't like the side of town that you got to move on. But it's cheap over it. But you, I don't even trying to go over. It. It's get over it and get what you end up doing. You end up going back. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and go back. Your brain try to tell you you can survive it. Let me tell you something. I went to prison and done ten years straight. And then during the ten years straight, I survived it physically. Yeah. When you walk out of the prison, a lot of people, man, you made it up out of there. But this right here. This right here was a warrior right here. He said, he said, he said, we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. He said, listen, this right here, this, this was a warrior right here. That's why he said, cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the most high. I'm going to repeat that to you again. It said, cast down every single thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the most high. He said, bringing it down to the, in, into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. Because this is where the war is going at. Just because you walked out of something physically, it don't mean you survived it mentally. And people don't understand how fragile this thing is right here. That's why the most high was calling us sheep. Because sheep are the most gullible animals on the planet. And so when you down here and you listen to me, you thinking, oh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to, you listen to me. He had already killed, he had already killed you. He'd, he'd already killed you before you before you decided to go back. And a boxer, when a boxer in the ring, Muhammad Ali was more effective, not because he was good at boxing. He, he had a mouthpiece on you. He had already got in your head mentally. So by the time you stepped in the ring and he done, he done, he done said what he was going to do to you and he done said he going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, you done already, you already don't know how to defend yourself. He, he, it ain't going to take number one or two punches. You're going to feel like the punches was harder than what they really was. You know why? Because he was already in you mentally. That's why chess is one. Chess is my favorite game. It's the same thing in chess. You sit down in chess and I get to talking to you and do, 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 And before you know, I can't beat you if you don't move your pieces. <laughs> Come on. By the time I get to moving them pieces, get what you're going to start saying to yourself. Man, he good. Man, he hard. And, and by the time I get you saying that, get what? You'll never. You'll never beat me. So so by the time, listen. So by the time you sitting, by the time you sitting and your kids complaining, you 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 have lost the house. You you had a business that you was doing in your house. Now you don't want your clients to realize. Well, dang, what's going on over there? How shit such and such? You really want to clean. You want to clean your image up. See, but see, that's the trick of the enemy too. You a lot of people be be so concerned about their image. You don't want other people to know what you're going through and what you're dealing with. That's why you got a lot of. That's why you got commercial break me one time for the one time. That's why you got a lot of folks in the church struggling. Because they'll go up in the church and they'll hoop and holler and they'll scream and they can't pay their light bill. They won't even ask their pastor because they, they, they won't tell none of their members. You know why? Because they don't want their members to tell somebody that they weren't able to pay their light bill. But he ain't here telling he ain't here telling you that what measure you give will be measured back to you. Press down, shaking together, and one and over. And a lot of people don't even realize. Some people mixing their mental health and their trauma in with the spirit. And then when you mixing your mental health and your trauma in with the spirit, and you don't really understand the true spirit, you in here and now you mad at the king because you feel like you didn't get the deliverance. 
deliverance or the blessing or whatever it is that you needed. You know why? Because you thought you were going to go in here and play the king. You thought you were going to go in here and hoop and holler and scream and do your little church dances and, and do all that stuff that them folks done made up and, and speak that fake tongue that ain't nowhere in the Bible and then say that you ain't speaking a fake tongue and you can't show me nowhere in history where they were, where they were doing all that. That ain't no tongue right there. Go read Acts. Go read the book of Acts when they spoke in tongue and tell me what the book say. Don't, don't, don't. I ain't got to debate you because the book said that they understood what, what was being said. You sitting there here speaking. Tell me what church you done been to when they started speaking in tongue and you and anybody in here understand what they saying. You you don't and don't defend it. Don't defend it because if you defend it, guess what that is? That is spiritual captivity right there. That is bondage. That is a yoke that is on you that you not that you don't want to break off of your mind. You know why? Because a lot of people are, are afraid to admit you've been taught wrong. You got to you got to you got to correct that. You need to unlearn some things. The word strictly say, don't speak in tongues unless you have an interpreter. And if it say it clear right there in black and white. And every tongue you go to, they man, it's the same tongue at every church that I went to. You telling me it sound the same everywhere? It's just not what it is. But look, check this out. And then people, <laughs> you wonder why you 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 wonder why you end up in these types of situations. But anyway. She, she, you could tell the enemy start. If you're not being encouraged, it's, it's three things to pay attention to with the spirit. I say it all the time. And when I say it, I'm saying it to remind myself. It's three things. You need to look for encouragement, comfort, and edification. If it's not encouraging you, edifying you, and comforting you, it is not of the king. You can go look it up in Corinthians. And then it say that he is not what? The author of confusion. So the minute you start to say, I don't want people, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, you so worried about people and knowing this and doing that, he creating that confusion in your, in your head, keeping you in bondage, keeping you in captivity versus you easily saying the truth. People kill me and say, tell the truth or shame the devil. People would rather live a lie than say the truth. Because when you say the truth, you have to look in the mirror. I was sitting in a cell in 2010, special aggravated robbery, special aggravated kidnap, first degree, premeditated murder, three counts of felony murder, and then a felony escape facing life in prison, calling home, still trying to lie, still trying to manipulate, still trying to get people to tell, to tell the truth, still trying to get people to change their statement. And the whole time, guess what? It was a lie. It was a lie. And the whole time I'm telling, I'm, I'm calling around. Let me tell you something, because the enemy, he ain't going to do nothing to add on to your chaos. I'm calling home to, oh, they told on me, this, this, and that. Yeah, what? They told the truth. See, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy plays, adding all of these labels and telling, and had you telling all these lies. The truth of the matter is, I have to look in the mirror and say, you did that. You did that. Somebody called you. You devised the plan. You went down there regardless if you pulled the trigger or not. Somebody lost their life. I had to look in the mirror and have this conversation with myself. And then not only did I have to have this conversation, get what I had to go. Get what I had to do. You made that girl drink that bleach. You 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 shot that boy three times. You 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 lied to your mama. You you ran off from juvie. You did this. You did that. You started selling dope. You the one. You the one who got affiliated. You, you the one, you the one did that, did that, and now you finna miss out on your child life. You, you the one, you the one that should have kept playing basketball and your coach told you you do. But you, you wanted to jump in the streets and sell dope. You, you, you wanted to do this, you wanted to do that. And I'm looking, and I'm, and I'm realizing I done made all of these calls. And I'm trying to get all these people doing something the whole time. It's, you ain't took no responsibility for nothing. You took no accountability for nothing. And this, listen, and then I'm watching T.D. Jakes, and I got to say this because this is the beautiful part of my transition. I'm watching T.D. Jakes one day, and I'm listening to the message. I can't remember what the message was, but I get up and I start pacing the floor, and I'm talking to the king the only way I know how to talk to the king. Commercial break me, please. Because there's a lot of people who don't understand. I ain't saying your relationship ain't genuine, but a lot of people pray with a certain structure that they've heard their church praying all the time. A lot of people get you get and that's a form of bondage right there because the, the spirit is not you. You can't you can't continue to it, it, it don't look the same for in everybody like you imitate. It's a difference between imitation and, and real like you're, you're imitating you're like you, you that's, that's a form like it's, it's you 
you just grabbing hold and doing what you saw. You repeating it the way that you heard it, the way that you've heard it repeated. You don't have a genuine, real relationship because you're doing stuff out of what you saw, probably out of habit. So at this point, in the beginning of me being on fire before, this is this is where I could tell it was genuine because it wasn't tainted. I didn't I didn't listen to a bunch of I didn't grow up in no church. My mama went right now. We went to church a few times. We didn't I, we wasn't no pew babies. I don't know no church song to this day. I don't know. I didn't I didn't know. So I didn't go through that. So my fire in the beginning, it was pure because I was searching and seeking. I, I hadn't sit up in no church all, all my life. And, 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 and when you hear that hoop in the pastor voice, you're thinking, oh, he preaching. The hoop ain't got nothing to do with the spirit. You can say what you want to say. It, it, it might can grab your attention. It might sound good, but it ain't got nothing to do with it if that person got the spirit. It, when they when they get up and they get to doing all that dancing and running all around the church and doing that that, that, that ain't that's, that ain't got nothing to do with the spirit. You can cut the music you know, when they when the music is playing and all of that emotion and the stuff that is going on and now you crying and you thought you done had a breakthrough. Sometimes that ain't got nothing to do with the spirit because I was sitting in my cell. By the time I got through listening to TD Jason, I said, you know what? I got up and got the pace the floor. I'm having a regular conversation. I'm talking to him. He talking back. We conversing. What's up, Quinny? We talk, we conversing. By that time I fell, by the time I fell down, listen to me. <laughs> by the time I fell down and I started talking, when I did that, and this is another reason I know the, 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 the tongues that I've been hearing, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, that ain't what it is. Because the feeling that came over me, I couldn't even control myself. It was almost like I had an out-of-body experience. I ain't got no reason to get on here, manipulate, lie, try to take advantage of you. Listen to me. The life I done live, it's only one reason I could get a credit to the king the way I get a credit to the king. Because I know my encounter was it was it was serious. And guess what? I don't believe in behavior modification. The only way a person can make the kind of transition that I, in my personal opinion, I ain't speaking for you or no, I'm speaking for me, is 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 by grabbing hold of the word. That that's it. Because there wouldn't have been no transition up here, no transition in here, no transition in my spirit had I not started reading the word of the Most High. Point blank period. By the blood that was shed by Yeshua, who we know as Jesus Christ. Yeshua Hamashi, who we know as Jesus the Christ. So look, check this out. So I get down, the, the spirit hit me. Tears is coming out of my, uncontrollably. I couldn't stop the tear. By the time I get up and whatever it was I spoke, tears was running down my eyes. Literally, I ain't got no... I'm wiping tears and they literally just stick. And it happened that same way for the next three days. Every time I started talking, praying, it would hit me the same way. And from that, I didn't understand the transition at the time. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I didn't know nothing about the word. The word, listen to me, the word is your the word is your fight. Anybody out here thinking they got some kind of dog in the fight and you don't know the scripture, the spiritual warfare gonna beat you up every time. It's going gonna, it's gonna to smack you around every time. You can say what you want to say. If you can't quote that word in order, if you can't quote the word and you don't understand certain things that happen in the Old Testament and the New Testament, why certain things move the way they move, when purple people was acting the way that they was acting, you, you ain't got no fight. You can say what you want to say. You ain't even going to understand what's going on. Guess what you're going to be hollering? Uh, he know my heart. Man, listen, the devil don't know nothing about the most high know your heart. The devil, listen to me, the devil going to punch you around every time. He don't care. Keep on saying that. The devil, you can say, oh, uh, he know my heart. He know my heart. He know my heart. Go on, go on, keep saying that. Go on, keep. Guess what? The, guess what else he know? He know you ignorant. You didn't hear. Did you hear? Because you, you talk about the king, right? Yeshua, right? Who we know is Jesus Christ. Go read when he went on that forty day pass and he put and he put him up on that high mountain. Every time the devil said something to him, he didn't say, Oh, he know my heart. He didn't say that. He quoted the word back. He said, It is written. He didn't say, when he said, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. He didn't say, oh, my father know my heart. When he, when he said, you turn that, you turn that stone in bread or whatever, he didn't say, oh, he know my heart. He said, it is written. So when th certain things is going on in your life and you can't quote that word and you don't understand spiritual warfare, <laughs> you gonna listen to her. I promise you're going to get Jean-Claude Van Damme every single time. I don't care what's going on in your life. So look, check this out. She ended up moving back in with the man, right? She ended up moving back in with the man. We equipped, we, it, it just started, I could tell it started, you know what I'm saying? We ended up kicking it one, we ended up kicking it one last time. Uh, well, one last time before it really broke off. I go to the hotel, we kicking it, had a good little time. She stayed all night. 
she ended up this this is before, this happened what I'm talking about right now. This happened before she moved back in. So we kick it, and I could tell she didn't know how to tell me. You know what I'm saying? Because it was love there at that point. I could tell she didn't know how to tell me that this this was finna like what was finna happen. You know what I'm saying? But I could I could already see it. I could already see it. So when she ended up when she ended up going back, I had a. Uh, I had, I'm trying to think had I moved yet. Now I had went to Atlanta. My books and stuff, my books, my books and stuff started taking off. So I was in a I was in a better position financially. And then I wanted to give it one more shot. So when I came back in town, now I was in North Carolina. I think I was in, was I in North Carolina? I think it was either Atlanta or North Carolina. I came back in town, little more fatigue. I messed her, I was like, I need to see you one more time. And she was like, cool. She was like, meet me in my sister's house. So we go to her sister's house, we kick it, you know what I'm saying? We downstairs, we having a little conversation. I'm talking to her, she talking back, we converse, we having a whole little conversation. In the conversation, I say this, I'm gonna give you $50,000 right now. She was like, for what? I said, go, I said, you find your house, I'm gonna help you get the house. I said, go take him the car back, tell him you don't need the car. I'm gonna go get you, a, I said, we'll go get you a car right now, we'll pay for it cash. She was like, what? I was like, for real. I showed her my account, I said, look, check this out. I said, I'm gonna give you 50. She said, well, what about the kids? I said, the kids? I said, they ain't gotta change school, none of that. They can, they can go to the same schools, this, this, and that, everything, everything's straight. I said, you, you ain't really gotta switch up nothing. Only thing you subtracting from your life is the problem. That's it. Only thing you subtract from your life is the problem. I'm gonna give you 50K right now. And her words was, let me think about it. I said, you just made your choice. She said, what? I said, let me think about it. I said, no. You just made your choice. She said, how you going to say that? I said, because of everything you done told me. And I've been on the phone with you before and heard them in the background. I know. I'm offering you an out of the situation. The only thing you subtracting is him. That's it. The only thing you subtracting is him. Your kids ain't got to worry about nothing. They got somewhere to stay. You're going to have transportation. Anything you need, you can set your business up, whatever you, I'm going to give you 50 grand. And you said, let me think about it. She said, well, let's get my sister a pen. I said, that was, that was good for you to answer that. So we go upstairs and we talk to her sister. Her sister don't know how many times I done offered a way for her to get out of the situation. So when we go over here, we talking and she, she explained the situation without telling her what I just offered her. I said, no. Nah, Kill all that. I said, look, check this out. I said, I just offered your sister 50. She said, 50 what? I said, 50 grand. I said, for her to make sure everything's straight, kids, car, transportation, shelter, everything. Her sister rolls up and said, I told you he was going to come back to get you. I told you he would come back to get you. And guess what? She started laughing. She said, I just got to think about it. I just, and I told her sister the same thing. I said, oh, no, you just made your choice. I said, you just made your choice. I said, that, that's that's over with. It ain't even, even for you to say you would think about it. My thought was, I come from the streets. You gonna, you saying you thinking about it because a part of you trying to figure out how you can finesse the situation, still keep the tie, and get the money. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's over with. Because you trying to figure out, well, I could get the house and this, this, and that, and still, boom, boom, and then a vent. Oh, no. That ain't, that, <laughs> that ain't what's going to happen. That's a wrap, homie. <laughs> that is a wrap. <laughs> That's over with. <laughs> the minute you let me think, think about it. Do you? Did you hear the stories that you told me? Did you? <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear the stories you told? Me? Oh no! <laughs> hey, look, do me a favor real quick. If you ain't already following me, hit the follow button and double tap the screen. Double tap the screen. If you ain't already following me, hit the follow button. True story. True story. And if you've been following me for a while, you remember when I done this, this same story on my TikTok probably about a year ago when I used the pictures of me and the woman I'm talking about. If you've been following me for a long time, you, you, you remember this story. It's a true story. For anybody who said, did he just make it? No. It is a true story, through and through.
And see, see, the person, and when you just said you wouldn't, I I can't say, I ain't gonna say the person's name. This is a woman I was messing with uh, in Indiana before I moved to Dallas. Uh, before I moved to Dallas. You're gonna have to go to YouTube. I'm gonna put this on YouTube. The story is about it. It was a time I was messing with a woman and she was still, you know what I'm saying? She was still married, but she, I, I left out that part, but I forgot to bring up that part about them going to court, about them going to court and stuff like that. Uh, every time the court date was supposed to come up, she was telling me they reset it and this, this and that. I was like, man, you gotta hear the stories. For anybody who just get on here now, you gonna be lost. Cause I, done, I just gave you the whole story. You ain't gonna understand. I, I seen a comment on her a while ago and somebody said, uh, somebody said, uh, what does this have to do with God? You, you, you probably ain't been following me too long if you if you said that. I'm on, I always put a message in my word. I, I believe in being transparent about, you know what I'm saying, the mistakes that I've made. I'm not, I'm most definitely not one of them dudes who's going to get on here and the only thing I'm giving you is the scripture. And in my opinion, that's, that's what's wrong with a lot of believers today. They give you a lot of scripture, no life lessons. They don't show you how to make money, balance money. They, 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 won't, they, won't, take, they won't tell you how to... Uh, how to deal with relationships and then to deal with you, deal with yourself, you know. There's a bunch of bunch of scriptures. That's just like with therapy. And when you take a medica medication, they don't start it. Now they believe in medicating with therapy. Sometimes you think if you think, oh, I can just give you a pill, I could just give you a I could just give you a pill and it's gonna take away all of your problems. No, because deep down I probably got some trauma too. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm just I'm just giving them the scripture. No, I'm gonna give you the scripture. I'm gonna tell you how I feel the most. I tell you how I feel down on my face. I'm gonna tell you about the time I let my flesh, because I'm not perfect by far. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'll fall today. I'll probably go to the mall and see somebody walking and they shoes leaning, and, I, and I'm gonna talk about them in my head. Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah, because I, yeah, because I'm almost there. <laughs> Look. Man, I'm finna get up off here, man. It's been a blessing. Night. Look, check this out. If you enjoyed that word, man, you took something from it, man, cash out me a dollar. Okay, so boom one has been a blessing. Yeah, none of us are perfect, that's for sure. Cash at me a dollar. O K S O B O O M one. Cash at me a dollar, man. It's been a lesson. It's been a blessing. If you ain't got to, if you didn't get to watch this, I'm gonna go put it on my YouTube. My YouTube is uh, Joe Baker. Y'all be blessed. You thought? Oh, hold on. What you just say? Cause I need to say this last. Oh, no, that, that ain't none of my stories made up when I'm on here. <laughs> now, if I get on here and you hear me telling a story, oh, it's real. Oh, it's the real deal. Y'all be blessed. Y'all hold it down. <laughs>